Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Well it's been a while since I done a video really so I just thought I'd uh, come up here and do some finishing touches to Jarrah Road. Now we know the station's finished. Well in saying that there's always little details I can add, maybe figures or anything like that, but generally the station is finished and everything associated with the station, signal box, water tower, signals, everything like that, that's all done, so I'm happy with that. Right, so now it's Char Road itself. There's a few little details missing. There's a bus stop. Slam posts and figures. There's not a lot of figures in what would be a pretty busy area, I would have thought. So, this video is about the finishing touches of Jarrett Road. And one of the finishing touches is just to put a paving in here, all the way up here where I left off and obviously to put a back scene on this edge so whenever I've got trains coming up or down um, Stevenson's Bank we don't see this the handrail that was put up um, for around the entrance of coming into the loft uh, I put the handrail up just to stop me falling down the stairs when I'm working up here so uh, yeah so yeah so we have that to do and um, yeah and hopefully if we get them things finished soon um, we can move on to another area of the layout because it seems like we've been in this area too long now but then again we still enjoy looking at this year's progress from Snooktown Farm all the way through to the finishing touches of that station and the signal box. So we've done a little bit this year and we hope to do a little bit more because we've still got a month or so left. Yesterday uh, we went to the Portsmouth uh, Model Railway Exhibition and I came back with this white metal truck. Um, <laughs> what drew, drew me to it was the fact, not the fact that it's an old truck, but the fact, the detail on it is one of the doors is open and if you look inside, someone's took the trouble to decorate the inside of the truck. What I mean by that is the paint of the seats and uh, and everything like that. Um, there's only one thing missing, there's no rear door on the back but I can put something on the back of there. Um, what I'm going to use it for? I'm going to use it as a cattle truck for when I come to do um, this little area here which has been bare for such a, a, a long time. Um, Another addition is, <laughs> I think it's quite a few of us now have got these, is the J.J. Jones uh, family butchers um, van from Dad's Army. Um, yeah, I may have some fun with that, adding some detail, but we shall see. So, back to the bench. So the first thing we're going to tackle is lamp posts. Now, if you put in double O gauge uh, lamp posts, you get the expensive type. But if, but as soon as you put H O into the search engine for eBay, you get uh, these type. Now I've bought these before, and they're seven nineteen for ten. And if you add on the postage, it works out at ten pounds for ten roughly and um, I think they're well worth it so I thought I'd show you this first before we get and this is the web page you want to look for is we 
honest and um, they've got other variants of lampposts as you can see there they've got a swan neck type um, swan neck bracket type double I quite like the look of those so there's there's plenty there to choose from and if I go up there or down sorry <laughs> they do have the gas lamp type as well if I just tick there you go and they're quite reasonable 5.99 for five there you go the gas lamp type got the uh, the bull nose type and the one that just sit on the lamp post as well so yeah it's worth looking around and these are a good quality and you and they come with the resistors as well so I have one of these lamp posts um, clamped on the bottom now you can do that because uh, the the brass tubing goes all the way through the the um, base of the lamp post so there so you can clamp it on that and it doesn't do it any harm what you have got to be very wary of is these cables are very very thin and very very fragile so that's what I'm going to do now I'm using a Humbrol 15 it's a really dark dark blue I'm just thinking um, every area of the layout has different color lamps so I'm going with a really dark blue here just so that it uh, signifies that uh, that we're in a different area I mean you could leave them um, grey or whatever colour they you, they come in to be honest but um, yeah I like to be that a little bit different um, when it comes to uh, and these are slightly different to what you have seen in the because they've got two rings one there and then one there um, so yeah so I'm just giving them a coat of this dark blue so I'm putting six in the area I'm hoping six will be enough I think it will um, just to add that little bit of light um, and street furniture of course Talking about the Portsmouth uh, Model Railway Exhibition, I took a photograph of one of these. Um, these, um, what would you call these? Kind of like a hop-up, if you were, to get up to the, or mobile stairs, so mobile steps. And um, <laughs> I quite like the look of this. I mean, if you notice, look, there's no handrails, so it does kind of fit in with the period of the 1950s and 60s where they are uh, they, they didn't seem to matter too much about health and safety but um, yeah so while the paint's drying I think I'll make a couple of these right so I've had a, a little bit of a deep rummage around in my common handy drawers and uh, we have the wheels which are just uh, bits of Oh, flashing been chopped um, which have come off some old kit uh, so I'll use them and I'll use these little round bits uh, as well as wheel rims and um, we've got a little bit of fence and I could use a little bit of that cut the plastic out of that and uh, we've got the actual platforms for the mobile stairs and we've got the ladders of course um, I'm looking at the photographs and there's seven steps before it reaches the, the landing if you like so yep I've got plenty of runners there so I could do that so uh, as for measurements wise I'm looking at the photograph and I'm looking at the figure it's about as tall as a man so so I would say say 25 mil is the height so I shall make some notes and I will make a start Right, so I've cut the ladders out of the flashing and I've 
kept the six runners like it is in the photographs and it works out roughly about 24 millimeters in height um, because of the angle, the angle that it's got to be set at. Um, because I've cut the runners off the ladders, these three runners I will keep and use them for a smaller hop up. Um, I know through my experience working in various factories that we've had smaller hop ups to reach um, the lower heights. By making the platform and gluing these steps to the platform and then that gives us a nice area to, to work from as it were because of this flat edge on the top. Now where I got these ladders from I'm not sure but these were HO scale ladders. So yep so that's what I'll do. We'll glue the cut the platforms out and glue these to the platform and then we'll have the basis of making the whole thing. Right so I've glued the landings onto the steps um, which was three foot by two foot and um, the little bits that are left over I'm making a hop up which is roughly um, three foot again by four and a half foot. So what I'll do then is I'll sand these down because obviously we've got a little bit of a, a ridge on there and I've already cut them at the, a very acute angle there roughly 15 degrees and uh, I'll just sand them down make sure they're nice and flat where I've trimmed them off for the original ladders I'll just glue them underneath and that will give us the hop up and then all I've got to do then is just add a little bit of framework underneath this edge and uh, yeah that'll be that hop up done so it's all about <laughs> Using up all the scraps, I think, because I've used the scraps off the off the ladders. So I'm using a little bit of leftover from when I made the the platforms. So yeah, I think that will look good when it's done. So we shall then. Right, so I've almost finished with the hop up. What I'm doing now is I'll just um, glue in a couple of stiffeners, um, which will give that a little bit of support. Notice how I've cut the angles already like so so that just should just slot into that there and let that glue go off and then we'll do the same to the other side Push that into the corner. Right, there we go. So that's the little hop up done. So that's ready for painting once the glue goes off. We have moved on a little bit. Um, we've got the posts which is going to support the axle. And I've drilled the holes in, ready. Um, it's roughly one and a half mils from the bottom. These are measured to 24 millimeters. Um, the diameter of the wheels here, which we're going to use, are six millimeters. So by the time they are fixed to that, they're, they're going to be the same height as the step. So the platform should be nice and level. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting the framework that goes around the platform of this mobile stairs as it were. So I'm cutting them to 11.5. So I need four of those and then we'll measure up for the the back piece as well while we're at it. I think that's going to be around about um, eight millimeters. So we're almost getting there but it's um, tricky working out the, the height especially for these posts 
um, which is going to have the, the actual glue to it. Um, so first of all if we do the framework which goes around the top get that in place then we've got some means of putting the posts um, up to it because these posts be glued to the inside of the framework. So that's the, the framework around the platform as it were. So the next thing to do is to fit these uprights with their wheels on into position. Now getting the right height that might take a little bit of an uh, experiment. Right, so I've now fitted the one mil through these posts. Um, I cut the one mil rod to seven, uh, 16 millimeters, and I've tapered it back so it matches the same distance in there, which is 7.5. So that should be 7.5. So that should glue into these corners quite e easily. Um, as for the base, I've made the base 10 millimeters, which is the same width as the ladder. So basically, once the wheels go on, it should look about right. Um, so that's the next thing now, is to drill out these um, bearings on these wheels right away through. So we've got a little bit of that rod sticking through, which will add a little bit of detail to the outside of the wheel. The frame's now glued in, so it looks like that, as you can see, with the axle running through the posts. So I'm just gluing together the tie bars which ties the ladder in with the post. Now in the photograph it's two and a half steps up so I'm going to do exactly the same. Try not to let it slide. So that will then tie in the ladders with the with the supports. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's take that back a little bit. And that then strengthen up strengthens up the whole um, set of our ladders. Right, so I've now fitted the wheels and I'm um, glad I left the axles long so I can trim them back. Just push that off. And that's it, that's them finished. I've just got to paint them now. And they do stand um, horizontally as well, which is good. There's no um, rocking, as it were. So, yeah. Right, so we'll, we'll paint these up and then we'll see what they look like. I'm using a really dark green uh, matte 1449 for the frames of these. Um, portable ladders. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not following what we have on the photograph for the colour scheme. <laughs> um, but I will be really dirty in these up once they're finished with some weathering powders. So yeah, so for the for the wooden frames I'm using the dark green. And uh, there's one I've done earlier, it's still a bit damp, so I'm just letting that dry and then I can uh, have a go at the wheels and the 
the landing of the stairs, as it were. I do find this part of the job quite satisfying because you've done all the hard work, you've done the build, and now you've just got to bring it to life. And uh, the only way to do that is a bit of paint. Right, so that's the uh, mobile steps um, finished. Um, I used the dark brown on the top and uh, obviously I just painted the wheels silver and black. Um, I think what's next is needed for these is to um, cover them in black weathering powder uh, just to tone them down. But, um, yeah. So I didn't go with the colour that was in the photograph, um, but I think that is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is that as it were. So that's it, that's these finished. So we shall let these dry because they're a little bit tacky at the moment. And the next time we'll see these, we'll see these in position on the layout. Right, so now we move back onto the lampposts. So what I'm doing now, I'm just tinning the the live cable, which is going to go onto the resistor. Um, I've already done the resistor, which is in the helping hands here. So I'm just uh, going to tear bare all of this joint together. So that's got it and what we'll do then we'll put a little bit of heat shrink on that and that helps protect the solder joint. Um, as we mentioned earlier on in the video I'm going to show you the power supply that I use for my LEDs. And this is it, this is the power supply that I use for uh, the LEDs. Um, as you can see it's 240 volts coming in and uh, 12 volts going out uh, 2 amps um, with a 24 watts now this should do roughly about 100 LEDs um, yeah any you can virtually use anything which has got 240 in and 12 volts out um, this came off a, a s uh, three meters um, length of LED strips, and uh, oh, obviously I didn't use this one. So what I did, I've I've used this for the LEDs on the layout. Um, I have three of these because I've divided the layout up into three quarters. Um, I might have to get a fourth one for when I um. Add light to little Avon, but uh, we shall see on that. So there you go. I just thought I'd show you this. Um, right. So these fine cables, I'm just using a scalpel blade just to pare back the sheathing of the cable very delicately, just so that we've got a little bit more cable to solder onto. Um, and then take a little bit off that side, flip it over and then do the same the other side. And hopefully you can see the copper cable coming through. It's a very delicate cable. You could try and use um, Right, so that there is ready for soldering on to. Just got tidy up the end. As you can see, it really is a fine cable. Right, 
Right, so with the heat shrink now finished, that just gives that joint a little bit of protection. Especially when we've got to slide it down through the baseboards. So, just, just, so when we tug on this, it just tugs on the sheathing of this cable and not try and pull the uh, soldering joint apart. So yeah, the cables are, like I said, are very, very delicate. I have now installed the lamp posts onto the Jarrah Road. As you can see, there's one outside the northeastern pub, and the rest are all the way down Jarrah Road. And um, yeah, it lightens up this little area of the layout. I mean, it's hard to, to see this um, for real because the, the camera doesn't do the lighting justice um, as you can see so yeah so that's the lighting done for Jarrah Road I've still got one lamp post to fit but uh, I can do that in my own time but I just thought I'd show you these before we have a look at the mobile steps over at the engine sheds and here's what it looks like in the light right so here we are at the new hassle sheds and you can see one of those mobile steps there. Um, it is a fraction high um, because of the floor. Um, if that was floor wasn't there and it was on the soil it'd be exactly the right height. But uh, I'm not too worried about that. But if you were making these for yourself I would just knock off a couple of millimeters. So let me just put this over here. next to the hush hush and it's almost perfectly level with the foot plate but then again they would have been using those mobile stairs for um, any type of uh, maintenance tax so oh, that's that one and as for the hop up I think salvaging those off cuts from the uh, ladders has really been worthwhile because um, old matey boy there is he's using it already he's topping up some of the oil pots there he's got his oil can in his hand and uh, yeah I think that was worthwhile doing that right I think that's all from me now until next time take care everyone and it's bye for now